Welcome to the channel. So today it was announced that Chris Sale will have to undergo Tommy John surgery. This goes all the way back to last season when Chris Sale's season was shut down early due to elbow inflammation. He did receive a PRP injection and rested for the rest of the year instead of undergoing Tommy John surgery. Heading into spring training, Chris Sale was feeling good. Besides a little bout with pneumonia, he said his arm was feeling great. However, on March 1st, he was pitching against live batters for the first time in six months, but was complaining of soreness in his elbow and ended up making a visit to three different orthopedic surgeons, one of them being the highly touted Dr. James Andrews. They concluded that he would need to be shut down for up to two weeks and go from there. However, after trying to throw again, he was still reporting pain in his elbow, and the call was finally made today for him to finally undergo Tommy John surgery. Now, in my opinion, this is going to be the best thing for both Chris Sale and the Red Sox. For Chris Sale, he's just starting his five-year, $145 million contract extension, so to get this done now early on in his contract is the best thing for him. To get the surgery and the rehab done now, he's going to have enough time to reestablish his value. His contract has an opt-out clause where he can opt out after the 2023 season. So if he comes back next year in 2021, pitches well, and then comes back again in 2022 and pitches effectively again, he could go into free agency in 2023 and he could get himself a decent contract. However, I would imagine that he's going to stay with the Red Sox. He's going to be earning $27.5 million in the last two years of that contract. So I can't imagine another team giving him more than that. If Sale were to want to test free agency after the 2022 season, he would have to pitch extraordinarily well in those two seasons that he would come back after the surgery. And as for the Red Sox, while I do think they're going to stay somewhat competitive this year, I think this is going to be good for them as well. However, you can look at this season for the Red Sox as more of a bridge year. If the Red Sox are out of contention by midseason, but have some players that are being productive like J.D. Martinez, Jackie Bradley Jr., Mitch Moreland, Colin McHugh, those guys could be traded off for prospects or for guys that can come in and help them out in 2021, kind of like what the Mets did with Marcus Stroman when they traded for him at last year's trade deadline. So if they do fall out of contention and trade for guys at this year's trade deadline, but also sign some guys in the offseason next year, and then you have Chris Sale come back in 2021, who knows, the Red Sox could have a pretty decent pitching staff in 2021 and beyond. But another bright side for the Red Sox losing sale is that they get to get a look at some of these young guys in their system. There's Brian Mata, Tanner Hoke, Darwin Zinn Hernandez, maybe even Jay Groom if he ends up flying through that system. However, keeping a focus on 2020, if the Red Sox are going to want to compete this year, they will absolutely need to have some other guys step up. They will have Eduardo Rodriguez, who was really good last year at the top of that rotation, but after him, it is a complete question mark. Asking for a fully healthy and productive season from Nathan Eovaldi is a lot to ask. Martin Perez has been pretty up and down his whole career. Will he be able to give you something this year? And they will have to have one of these younger guys in their system have a breakout year to even give somewhat of the production that Chris Sale did before. And they're also going to have to have success with an opener this year. In the end, this is a lot to ask. At the end of the day, though, I think this is going to be best for both sides. Chris Sale is going to get the surgery done. He's going to get the rehab done early on in his new contract. The Red Sox are going to be able to take a look at some younger guys to see if they can give anything productive this year and beyond. So if the Red Sox are going to have a bridge year this year, you might as well do it without Chris Sale. You might as well just let him go get the surgery, get healthy, and then he can come back for the last four years of that contract if he doesn't opt out after the 2022 season. But that's just my opinion. Tell me what you think down below in the comments. How do you think the Red Sox will do without Chris Sale this year? How do you think Chris Sale is going to do when he comes back from Tommy John? Do you think he's going to be the same Chris Sale? We're on the way to 400 subscribers for this channel. So if you are looking for more baseball insight, feel free to subscribe down below. If you like today's video, leave me a thumbs up. If not, leave me a thumbs down. As always, have a great day. Thanks for watching and I'll talk to you next time.